let's, uh, let's start with the Iwo Jima moment uh, or the Reichstag uh, Soviet flag moment uh, when Israeli soldiers, having conquered the Al Shifa hospital, climbed up onto the roof and planted their flag there. An ignominious moment, an ignominious end to a quite atrocious set of war crimes and crimes against humanity. At least that's how I see it. How about you? Absolutely. Look, the, the Israeli Defense Force has brought nothing but shame to it uh, for during the course of this entire campaign. Um, Let's, let's just be straight up honest. Uh, they were beat in a stand-up fight on October 7th by Hamas, and they were humiliated. And that humiliation is carried over into this operation that's taking place. This operation has very little to do with actually trying to accomplish legitimate military objectives and everything to do with exacting revenge on a helpless Palestinian people, because that's what Israel is up against. Uh, you know, Hamas, after carrying out what I call the most successful military raid this century, because it wasn't an act of terrorism, what Hamas did on October 7th was a classic military raid with classic military objectives, and they accomplished them all. Then they withdrew to prepared positions. That's the final act of a raid. Their prepared positions have to be happen to be underground. Um, as they are want to be if you want to survive with Israeli air supremacy, et cetera. Um, and Israel has gone into Gaza knowing that they're not going to close with and destroy the Hamas enemy through firepower and maneuver in classic military terms, that they're going to instead carry out collective punishment against the citizens of Gaza, the innocent Palestinian people. And um, they're not even hiding it now. In addition to these horrific visuals, I mean, you know, raising the flag over a hospital. Really? These Israelis that put the flag above the Al Shifa hospital, they should be ashamed of themselves. I hope that their pictures are taken, that their faces are recognized and broadcast around the world. So wherever they go to try and get somebody to buy them a beer for being a man, for raising the flag, instead people will spit in their face because that's all they deserve if they can walk out of Gaza alive because this battle ain't over yet. Hamas is still there. There's a lot of fighting left. George, I don't want to sound like I'm glorifying war. I'm not. My ideal solution right now is a ceasefire that brings an end to this conflict, gets, gets the Israeli troops out of Gaza, gets peacekeeper troops in Gaza, and gets humanitarian supplies to the people that so desperately need it so that the international community can get, begin the business of talking about how do we make sure that this never happens again. That should be everybody's priority. It should have been Israel's priority on October 8th. Not to say how do we exact revenge, but how do we prevent this from happening again? How do we prevent an October 7th from ever happening again? Because everything that's transpired since October 7th has turned international opinion away from Israel. The only way to disarm Hamas is to give the Palestinian people a homeland. And then Hamas loses its right, its need for militancy. But that's not what Israel's doing. They claim they're trying to defeat Hamas. But understand this, Hamas isn't just fighters to be killed. It's an idea. It's an ideology that has taken root now. If you wanted to kill Hamas, Israel, you're doing the exact worst thing because Hamas now is being embraced by people who never would have embraced Hamas. The idea of Palestinian statehood is now mainstream like it's never been before. George, this is the greatest defeat Israel has ever suffered, and they don't know it yet. How much revenge uh, will satisfy uh, Netanyahu? Uh, it's 11,000 dead now, 74 0.5% of them women, children, and elderly people. Uh, is 22,000 dead, 52,000 dead? Uh, how many dead uh, will it take to satisfy that thirst for revenge? Because you're right, they cannot, even Israel cannot kill 2.3 million people. Uh, even our brain-dead politicians could not stand by 
whilst 2.3 million people were killed. So the killing is going to have to stop short of killing every Palestinian. The question is now, how far short? Well, the problem is, George, and you know this, the Israeli government has been hijacked by literally this criminal right-wing element that is imbued with a notion of Israel that nobody in the world supports, nobody in the world can support. The notion of a greater Israel, an Eretz Israel, one that has no Palestinian people. It, you know, Hamas, and, I, and again, I understand, but is condemned for, you know, from the river to the sea, because people interpret that as anti-Semitic. You want to annihilate the Jewish population. But you know who invented it, George? You know who invented it. The Likud Party invented it. It's the original motto yeah. of the Likud Party. From the river to the sea, no Palestinians there will be. That's their theme. That's what they do. And now they have a government that is bringing this to life. So when you say how many, George? All. They want them all gone every single one of them, and they're not even hiding it now. These rabbis are preaching to the troops, saying, get them all, kill them all, get rid of them all. The Israeli government is talking about getting them all out of Gaza, driving them out somewhere. They don't care because they don't view the Palestinians as humans. I mean, this is the worst aspect of what's going on here. Politics is tough. You know that. You're a politician. Um, and, and sometimes people take hard stands and bad things are done. But this isn't politics, George. This is hate. This is pure, unadulterated hatred. And what kills me, what kills me is no matter how you feel about Hamas, no matter how you feel about Hamas, you have to understand that you can't embrace an action undertaken by Israel that dehumanizes an entire people. The Israelis are not crying about the babies, George. The Israelis are not crying about the women. They're definitely not crying about the men. They don't care. They've hardened themselves to the point where they no longer view the Palestinians as humans. And as so long as your government and my government have this see no evil, hear no evil, say no evil approach about Israel, where Israel is cannot be criticized, the killing will continue. The only way this stops is when our politicians demand that it stops. But we, so far, don't seem to have an upper limit, which speaks volumes, speaks volumes about the people whom we have put in office. You know, we are democracies, George. We elect people to represent us. And if those people truly represent us, it doesn't say much about us collectively as Americans and British because we're standing by. Yes, we fill the streets with people demonstrating, and I applaud everybody who went out to demonstrate, but we need to step it up. And I'm not talking about violence, George. I'm not, I, I'm all in on the nonviolent thing nowadays uh, because war only begets death and destruction. I've learned that hard lesson. I'm about not going to war. But we need to find a way to send a signal to these people. Where is corporate America? Where are the donors? Where are the people that give money to the politicians that get them into office? Why aren't they calling up? Why aren't we calling them saying, hey, you do a business that allows you to make money, to donate money to a politician? You don't do business anymore, pal, until you get on the phone and you say, stop the killing in Gaza. That's what we have to do. We have to stop it now. Every day we don't do this, George. You know what's going on. Hundreds of Palestinians are dying, but we stopped caring. Yeah. Once you see those photographs, you become immune to those photographs. And that's what's happened. It's a, it's a bloodlust exhaustion where we have seen so much horror. It's filled our eyes and filled our minds that we become numb to it. We can't become numb to it. We should cry ourselves to sleep every night in shame, collective shame, about what's happening in our names. Because this isn't an Israeli crime, George. This is an American crime. This is a British crime. This is a European crime. This is a global crime. Every human being on this planet is guilty of killing these people because we're not doing anything to stop them. The damn Arabs and Muslims met in Riyadh and didn't do a damn thing. Excuse my language. I apologize using French on your show, but they didn't do anything, George. Nothing. They talked, talked, talked talked, but when they had the chance to use the one weapon that could actually turn the tide, the oil weapon, 
they wouldn't even consider it because money is more important than blood, apparently.